In this episode of the Rebel Entrepreneur Coaching Series, there are adult themes and swear words. So please be careful. If you're listening to this in your car with your kids in the back seat, maybe listen to a different episode and come back to this one. Adult content is coming up. If you build it, they will come. We were told that lie by Fields of Gold and Kevin Costner. It's just not true. If you build it, no one will come unless you promote it. And if you don't market, if you don't promote, if you don't sell, you won't grow a business. Welcome to the Rebel Entrepreneur Coaching Series. The extraordinary belongs to those that create it. Rebelling against business plans and debt, rebelling against what society expects of us to build cool businesses, make money, have fun and do good. Let's create something extraordinary together. Welcome to The Rebel Entrepreneur. Jamie, welcome back to the show. Uh, We are deep in this Kickstarter process now, and you sent me an intriguing message earlier saying, I've got good news. Do I want to know now or the podcast? And I was able to put on my big boy pants, and I've waited to find out on the podcast What is going on? What's the news? What's happened since we've last spoken? What's going on? Oh my gosh, so many things. So the news will have to wait a little bit because it's in context to news you already know. And then if I just told you, everyone listening would be like, I don't understand what you're talking about. So you'll have to wait a little bit. Ha ha. So last week we were talking about marketing and one thing in particular, I was like, but how? Because I had been reaching out to people I already know, connecting with them, having a wonderful yes. stories where people and I are connecting and they're all like super encouraging of, of my Kickstarter. So this week I started reaching out to people I do not know, but are following me. So I literally, the first two strangers. days, yeah, strangers on the internet, Ooh, we all know where that leads. Uh, (laughs) to sales to to sales I can't say what kind so what I would do the first few days was nothing because of course that is exactly what happened and I was like okay dude you gotta do this so I would do my morning journal I journal for like 15-20 minutes every morning I open up Instagram and then I click you know when your mouse you click the middle button you can open a new tab I would go into my followers not the Mm. ones I'm following the followers and I would just open about 20 tabs And I had my little thing and it was like, actually, I could literally read it to you if you would like to know what I wrote to people. I would love to know because I think that's the hardest bit. People don't know what to say. It's like, I've got these random strangers. What do I say to them? So I would love to know. So this is what I wrote to 90% of the people. And okay, if they had a name, some people on their Instagram don't put their name. If they had a name, I would put their name. Hi, Chrissy. Thank you for following and liking my art. Did you know I'm launching a Kickstarter this Monday, March 1st? It's my first printed comic, and I'm really nervous, exclamation point. It's a short horror comic starring a sex worker robot called Mandy Nine. It would mean so much to me if you could check it out and share it with anyone you know who loves indie comics, horror with humor, and cool female characters. Here's a link to the pre-launch page. Do you mind if I send you a reminder again on the actual launch day? So that is I wrote. If the person following me was an artist... I would say, hey, John, I love your art or your art's really creepy and cool or whatever. If they were a pretty goth girl, I would be like, hey, I love your style. I tried to find something in it, but that was some of them, like they just had pictures of their family. It was getting really long. So, you know, some of them know. But if I had time, if I could, I would try and put something personal in each one. Okay, so there's a few problems with that besides it being very long on Instagram, you cannot message anyone unless you are following them. So I had to follow all these people. So I went from like, you know, five something following to like 700 something. So I I contacted about 200 people. So now I have like a ton of people I'm following, which means maybe this is a good thing. So it means when I go to Instagram, my feed is full of people I I don't really want to see like their pictures of their cats and dogs and food, but maybe it's a good thing because it forces me to not go on Instagram and just scroll, right? I'm like not <laughs> tempted. I'm like, oh, I'm tired. nah, I'm good. I'm good. So maybe that was a good thing. Now I have a ton of follow. Like it's interesting as I noticed I had lost followers during this time, but it's like, okay, obviously you thought I was spam, which is fine. Cause if you were following me and I wrote you and you went away, you were probably spam too. Then uh, yeah. Okay. So hold on. I should get a calculator. And approximately, I tried to count. It was very hard. I did about, let's say 120 people. Okay. 
And I just counted quickly. And this is people I don't know. This isn't counting people I do know. About 33 of them replied. So like, what's the percent cool. of that? Yeah. So that's like what? That's about 25%. Yeah. Whoa, that's pretty good. It's a pretty good return rate. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Some people just hearted the message. Some people were like, yeah, sure. And a couple of people had like a back and forth and they were like, hey, yeah, I love your art. I'd love to do that. And I'm like, thank you so much. That means so much to me. Oh, you know, actually, like I was thinking of getting a commission from you. And I'm like, there's going to be some price, some cheaper commissions on, you know, on the thing. And then like someone told me, that like, you know, they wanted to help, but they were feeling depressed and they didn't, you know, they weren't doing so well. And I'm like, hey, no worries. Like if you need some motivation for your art, you can always write me. Like, you know, I just really like any, anyone who wrote back to me, I was like there, I was like writing back to them and I was there for them emotionally if they needed it. So that was like super nice. Now, like I still, it, the launch is on Monday. I haven't even touched my Twitter. What's nice with the Twitter is you can just write people and you don't have to follow them. So on my laptop in the other room, yes. I opened up, I don't know, like 50 tabs. And then I'm going to just pound it out to mo- like this weekend, just like pound out another at least 50 messages. And it'll be like Monday. Oh my God. So one thing that's nice is at least in my Instagram messages, when I scroll, the last message from me has a link. So it's very easy to see if they didn't write back. So everyone who did write back, I'll just send them a reminder on Monday. I contacted colleagues. I contacted old colleagues. I contacted, like I contacted a lot of people. There was some cool stuff. So first, okay, like I've had three people I know who have run Kickstarters and I didn't know, like, well, one of them I did know, but two, oh, so many things. Okay. I'm going to tell you the really cool news and then I'll tell you some of the other stuff to the audience who hasn't heard. So one of my friends I reached out to about my Kickstarter well, I was like, Hey, how are you doing? It's been a while. Da, 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 Kickstarter. He had said in his like message, oh, I'll reach out to my contacts at Kickstarter if you want. And I'm like, no, he's not the contacts at Kickstarter. But this guy like is like very talented and is making a living off his art. So then later on, instead of being like, can you ask your contacts? (laughs) I was like, hey, friend, can you give me some hints on how to get like a projects we love tag on Kickstarter? And he said, sure. Love actually, that. Well, no, actually, he didn't say sure. He said, hold on, give me your email. I'm going to introduce you to my friend at Kickstarter. He sends an email to me and this person. I don't want to say their name because I don't know if like that's something that I'm allowed to share or share any of the personal information they gave me. But anyways, here we go. So I'm not going to say their name, but I guess I'm going to give you a brief of what they said. Call them Jane or Janet or something. Yeah, Janet. I like that. Like a Rocky Horror Picture Show. Okay, so Janet. Well, here's exactly what happened. He wrote her and me, and I wrote, hey, thanks for the intro. She's a writer. So first thing I do is go to her website. I find out she writes awesome, cool stuff. And I talk, I say, hey, Janet, really nice to meet you. I just checked out your website. I absolutely love this, this, and this about you. This article, you write about cool, weird stuff. I love cool, weird stuff. You know, in fact, like my mantra is it's okay to be weird. Uh, I'm really looking forward to reading, you know, this particular article on, well, it was the history of lesbian porn, which I actually am actually super interested in reading. And so I said, you know, here's my Kickstarter page. If you have any tips for me, I would love to hear it. And she writes back, Jamie, it's a delight to meet you. Thanks so much for the kind words about my writing. Flattery will get you everywhere. Hee <laughs> hee. I'm so pleased you've chosen to bring your comic to Kickstarter, and I love it so much. I honestly don't have much in the way of notes. Your title, subtitle are perfect. Creators usually have so much trouble with those. And your video is just delightful. You've told your story succinctly, but with plenty of compelling details. You've included a great mix of text and images to keep the campaign page interesting, plus your art rules. And you have a great spread of rewards and a good mix of digital, physical, and limited edition. Uh, You must have gotten a lot of good advice or else you're a serious Kickstarter natural. I've tagged this campaign, a project we love, since, well, I love it. And you'll launch with that. And then she gave me some links to help me with other stuff. So I'm going to start my Kickstarter. That's amazing. As a project we love. Now, you knew that, Alan. You knew that already. The audience didn't know that. But you're like still wondering, like, <laughs> what is the thing? What is the thing that I don't know? That every so okay, so here's the thing you don't know. I get this today. This is just today. Her to me, the other guy is not uh, a CC. Hey Jamie, I've been working with a publicist for comic projects, 
and we're experimenting with a weekly tip sheet that goes out to a swath of industry press folks. I'm going to include True Love Inc. on Monday. Would you be okay with me sharing your email as a press contact in case anyone wants to get in touch? Is this real life? <laughs> yeah, no. Please don't share it. I yeah. don't want to talk to anyone. <laughs> yeah, 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 right? Yeah, like, I was like, uh, super cool. Yes, please. Like, literally, that's like what I said. She's like, great. Uh, what? She's going to share my freaking Kickstarter. Like, I cannot believe this. This is amazing. What the freak is happening? Oh, yeah, I can swear. What the fuck is happening? This is amazing. So that made my <laughs> afternoon. I got my work stress down. I was feeling pretty shitty today at work and then I got that I'm like you know what feeling pretty motivated right now feeling pretty good drinking my pink non-alcoholic beverage that's incredible absolutely incredible and I think the thing I'd love the audience to take away here is what Jamie has done is she's just got out there and she's talked to people and I think whenever someone's launching a new project there's some reticent to go and talk to people because you don't want to bother them you don't want to seem pushy all of those different things but none of this would have happened unless Jamie put herself out there, messaged people and talked to people. And actually, if they're your friends, they want to know what you're up to. They want to know what's going on. And it's like, this is cool. And even your non-friends, like you've got a 25% response rate with that message. If you're listening to this, go back, write down what Jamie said and repurpose it for your product. Like that's a really well-written, nice message that gives people out. And I love that. Like, this is incredible. You've done the hard work, Jamie. We should definitely be celebrating with a colored fizzy drink. It's a Friday when we're recording this. Yeah. Let's celebrate. Oh, for sure. I'm going to take the evening off and watch a horror movie. That's how I'm going to celebrate tonight. Now, Ooh. there's there's one more thing that I kind of forgot. Like, this is just an aside. So, you know, that one episode where you were like pretending to make a little voice and be my inner critic. And you were saying, why do you feel so bad? And I was like, well, you know, like I was remembering like, in university when people were really judgmental and I, you know, they didn't say things to me directly, but I felt always not as good as these other people. And like, there's this one particular friend of mine, he's so talented and I, I just always compare myself to him and I'm really embarrassed. I really am embarrassed. I am scared to share my project with him. I'm so scared because he's so good and talented that he's going to think my project is dumb. Well, who do you think is the one that shared my project with the woman from Kickstarter? It's the guy that I thought... <laughs> I thought he would think my project is dumb. He would never have shared it. He would have never have put his <sighs> reputation on the line if he didn't think my project was good. He would have never if he didn't believe it. in it. Yeah. He's the one who shared it. What? This is real. This is crazy to me. So that I feel is like a full circle of like my fear of almost not sharing it with him because I didn't think I was good enough. And then he's the one that shared it with the woman at Kickstarter. Ooh. Isn't that interesting? The biggest fear turns out to be the biggest opportunity. And I feel like that's that saying coming back that everything you want in life is outside your comfort zone. Otherwise, you'd already have it. And you took the biggest fear, you went and did it, you messaged the person. I always think it's incredible. Like Artists, creators, entrepreneurs, they're used to putting things out there and they're actually, they tend to be in their personal life the least judgmental because they know how hard it is to put something out there and get that judgment. So I think if you were going to pick someone to share it with, picking a creator who's had their own work judged is a great place to start. I love this. This is fantastic. So what would you say to everyone listening? What's the message from this story? Well, honestly, I do hear your voice in my head saying everything you want is outside your comfort zone because I, I, you know, I'm an avid podcast listener of your show. And I thought of that every time I didn't want to send those messages. Actually, when I didn't want to send those to like the cold calls, one would almost call them a cold, you know, on Instagram, I would just be like, you know what, if this is something you do not want to do right now, it's probably the thing you're supposed to be doing. So it's six in the morning. Just open up 20 tabs, pump out that freaking email, and then go work out. And that's what I did. I found it hard to do them later at night, but if I just did it in the morning before working out, done. So absolutely, the thing you do not want to do, the thing that's putting that knot in your stomach, I know I'm not the first person to say this, but honestly, you're going to carry that knot with you all day. So you might as well just fucking deal with it and get it done 
And then you're not carrying that knot with you all day. And then it's over with. And I've been doing that for a lot of things. So yeah, there you go. That's what I have to say. Just do the thing that you don't want to do. Get it over with. It's probably, yeah, the thing you need to do. Yes. And it's like normally when I do those things, it's never as bad as I think it's going to be when I actually do it. And then the relief afterwards of having done it, made progress, got on is unbelievable. The release of energy. Actually, I ended up turning it into a game because I would set an alarm and I'd be like, how many of these things can I pump out in like 20 minutes, you know? And yeah, if, if you're writing people's name, if I'm looking at their art, you know, it's, I'm not just copy, paste, copy, paste. I, I really wanted to make sure it didn't come off spammy. So if I looked at someone, I didn't send to like all, like I would open up a tab and if it looked like a spam account or just a shop or something that didn't have, I was like, I'm not going to waste my time here. And then people who I had connected with from other things, like one example is, um, I made friends with the owner of like an online horror blog. She has podcast network and and she has like blogs. I just wrote her and she's like, Oh, send it to my email for sure. You know, I'd love to share it. So I don't know if she will or not, but she was super excited about it. So, you know, like the women in horror connections I made like two years ago are coming back. So I was connecting to those people and being like, Oh, women in horror is kind of ending. That sucks. But I love that you're still doing this. And everyone was very excited to see my work. So that was cool. There was another thing that happened, another good thing. One weekend, there was like these two, I think I told you, like there was these two online art shows that I organized and you were like, oh, you're organizing stuff for other people. And I was like, yeah, you're right. Well, one of them, because it's kind of my community group uh, and it's like, it was dark art, satanic art stuff. One of the members of the group, I had specifically like invited all of my actual real life friends. And like, well, people I've met in that group, I invited them to come to the online art show. And one of them saw my art and I mentioned that I was doing Kickstarter and he said, let me know when your Kickstarter is launching. So I, I let him know. And he said, I've launched like half a dozen Kickstarters. If you need advice, let me know. I'm like, yes. <laughs> so I sent him the preview link and he spent an hour with me on Skype going over my whole, did I tell you this? He spent an hour with me going over my whole page. No, I don't know if I told you the details though. Oh yeah, I wanted to talk to you about the things he told me. He gave me such great advice. He's like, Jamie, your page is great. Few things that it's missing. One, what are people actually getting? I'm like, oh my God. I didn't even think of that. I've said that it's a full color comic. I didn't say it's a printed comic this size, you know, this paper texture. Like I didn't actually talk about the actual physical thing that they're getting. So he gave me that advice. We talked a, a lot more about the pricing and he is more in the camp. Of... You weren't debating the amount again, were you? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I was. I thought about you though. And we did say, and I think I might stay where we are, but he did say his advice is to go for the, for, especially for a first run to go for the, the minimum just to get it printed. I'm just, I'm still running the numbers because something seems wrong. And I, I need to just tomorrow with my coffee, sit down and do it all by hand one last time before launching. Because the printed comic, it seems like I'm going to be making like a, making a dollar or two off of the printed comic. So hopefully most people will not get that one. Hopefully most people will get the comic and the print and that one will actually bring profit. He's really encouraging me with the, the digital stuff is great. He said his first, first Kickstarter made more than his second Kickstarter. And this is what I suspect will happen for me too, because the first one, friends and family who are not into your product are into you. So they're going to support you. But the next one, they're like, ah, Jamie's good. Her first one was funded, you know? So I suspect that a lot of people will support it. And they're like, I don't want a freaking horror comic with a sexy robot girl. Oh God, I, I'm, I'm all flustered. I'm like literally like super excited. Everything's just so fun. And I'm super flustered right now. Uh, I don't even know what to talk about. So many wonderful things are going on. But he did help me a lot. He said I should think about having another of the higher tiers because I have the Be the Victim tier. He said, is there any other characters that could be in the comic? And I'm like, well, I could have a slightly lower tier because there's she has sex with like two guys plus the victim. Plus there's a, a guy at the beginning who is the first, first guy. So three guys that don't get killed. So I could have like a hundred dollar or a hundred dollar fifty tier of like be a client where you're in the comic, but you're not killed. You don't get the big, you know, payoff. So I'm thinking of throwing at least one more of those in. So I have to really, this weekend, I have to really think of that. I didn't finish my art print yet. So I'm trying to finish the art print so people can see what it is. I can always add stuff to it, but I want to make sure that like the coloring page, the art print, the cover, 
I mean, those the cover's done, the, the pages are done, but if the art print and the coloring page are done, then those can be there. And just make sure that the tiers are perfect because I think that I'm going to include shipping with the printed comic because most American Kickstarter backers usually get free shipping because shipping within the States is so is so cheap. It won't be cheap for me, but I think it'll be worth giving them free shipping. So up in, so the price of, of the comic will be like $15 or $16, including the shipping so that they're more excited that when they get to the checkout, they're not, oh God, you're adding $5 on. So just for the comic one, for the print, it won't be included uh, or any of the higher, higher tiers. Uh, anything that has more than just the comic book in it, I think. That was a lot of talking. How are you feeling? How are you feeling with my barrage of, of, of talking? I'm going to drink my pink drink and mute myself for a bit. No, I think it's fantastic. The advice you got was excellent. And I think it's always interesting going to other people and having two to three people go through something will always give you different perspectives and different learning. I think the thing I would add is there does come a stage, which luckily we've got a date, like that's it. But there does come a stage where you've just got to do it. And I don't know if you've heard of the 80-20 rule, Pareto's principle. I'm sure everyone on the podcast has heard about it. Yeah, I was just literally talking about it today, though, in the context of work, and I won't go into details. But yes, I'm very aware of it. Yes. So they say 80% of your results will come from 20% of your react, uh, actions. And like you've got 80% of this nailed down. You've probably got more than 80% of it nailed down, but you've definitely got 80% of it nailed down. And I think. Like It's great to go through these details once more because the details are important, the financing, the levels. And I think this guy's idea of having two of those extra levels of one person is getting the death level and two people are getting to be in the comic with Mandy Nine, putting it politely. You can say client. They are clients. Clients. Yes. (laughs) So I think that is fantastic because that will actually increase the amount you can get for the comic. I think it's a brilliant idea. That is something that people just won't ever get. Like, I've been immortalized in a comic book. Here I am. I think that's incredible. I think my point is there comes a stage where we've just got to get on with the marketing and we need to finalize the details and all of our energy, all of our focus is about spreading the word, which you've already started and you're making massive progress. And I love this. So one of the concepts that I realize this took me about five years to learn jamie i'm not a quick learner people in the past have always said that business is either boom or bust you're either doing really well or there's nothing coming in and i worked out what it is and what i worked out was when you start your business you don't have any customers so you put your energy into marketing you throw yourself in you send lots of messages then you get some customers when you get the customers The thing that happens is you then change your focus from sales and marketing to delivery and you kind of lose focus on the sales and marketing and you end up delivering the product. And when you're delivering the product or service, what are you not doing? Looking for leads or doing the marketing? Looking for leads, sending the messages, cranking out the 20 in the morning, whatever it is. And this, I only know this because this is exactly what happened to me. I would sell a pop-up business school and then I'd almost stop doing any of the marketing sales. And I'd be running a pop-up business school and then it would end and I'd go, oh, where's the next business? But I hadn't been drumming up whilst I was doing it. And business is boom and bust because people's sales and marketing is either on or off. So they spend two or three weeks sales and marketing and then they do nothing whilst they're delivering and then think, oh, I've got no business. And then they have to start the cycle again. And that was the cycle of my life for five years. So I would just say to everyone listening, including Jamie, sales, marketing, promotion should be a daily activity. And even if we're doing the spreadsheet stuff, checking the numbers, like let's crank out 20 messages before we do that. Let's do the 20 minutes right at the start. Because if we stop for a week marketing the product and the project, then we will stop getting the traffic. And it's very on and off. If we stop marketing, people stop coming. If we stop selling, people stop buying. So it's that continual bit And I think it's really important to do the details and it's really important to continue marketing and sales every single day. Yeah, I agree. And now after seeing that, and I'll say like, as an artist, 
the marketing has always been very elusive because, you know, I read a lot of marketing and this and that, and everything everyone else is doing seems to be related to that product or service, you know, but I'm offering, yes, a product, but it's like a luxury product. People don't need a comic. And it was always really, really elusive. Like, how the heck am I going to share this? So when you told me just go to your followers and write them, I know it sounds so dumb, but it was a real aha moment of like, oh, I just talk to them, you know, really? (laughs) But now then my question is, like now, if I contact them all again on Monday, it's it's fine. You know, I've asked them and and, and that's what's going to happen. I'm not going to recontact the people that didn't write me back. It's not like a, a call where I, someone missed a call, I'm going to try again. Like they're going to see that I wrote them twice. It's going to look super spammy. So I think in that way, the recontact of someone who hasn't written back is, is fine. I will contact everyone who did write me, even the people who liked the little heart, you know, it's like, sure. Just be like, hey, just a reminder, blah, blah, blah. How do you market consistently and not come off as annoying. So I think point number one, you're Canadian. Uh, You are so far off being annoying that you can push it far harder than you think you can. I would have different advice to different people, but you do not have that in you. You are very conscious of that. I think if someone has missed a message, it is fine to send another one because I don't check my messages all the time. And I know I have ignored messages on Facebook Messenger, on Instagram, LinkedIn. I get hundreds of messages on LinkedIn. I can't keep up. I check every now and again. So I think I just have in your mind that people are busy and they're not ignoring your message because they don't like you, because it's personal, because they think, oh, that Jamie, she messages me every day. I hate her. That's not what goes on. They don't even think about it. They don't even see it. And I think you know, two, three times spaced messaging, sending them something is absolutely fine. And you've got to keep doing it because the average time people don't see your first message. They actually reckon it's 21 impressions. And by impressions, I mean, they see your thing somewhere. So they see it on the Facebook feed. They see it on the Instagram feed. They see a message from you. They get a flyer through the door. They watch your video. They do this. It's like 21 impressions to start to get to someone to the point where they're going to go, I need to buy this now. And you've probably seen this where things keep coming up and eventually you go, oh, it's that thing again. Yes, I do need that. And it comes. But I think we are so afraid of being pushy and in people's faces that we actually go far too far the other way. And we send one message and kind of, and I only say this because I do it, Jamie. I send one message and then I sheepishly stand in the corner and go, I'm sorry to have bothered you. Uh, Would you mind having a look at my product? And if they don't reply, yeah. So does that make any sense about this sort of getting your message out there and not being afraid to put it out there? And they're just busy. Yeah. And you know what? I'm such a silly goose because I was so scared to share it even on my own Instagram feed and my own stories. So dumb. So dumb. Anyways, I have a whole month to continue pushing it. So I know it's so dumb. This is a huge part of your life. Share it. Share it everywhere. This is what's going on with you at the moment. This is what's happening for you. This is your world. So share pictures of you drawing, share pictures of you launching. And actually the people who love you will go, this is what Jamie's doing. And they'll be interested and intrigued and like share this stuff, set the camera up behind you and film you sketching a little bit and put that on Instagram, just 20 seconds of it. Like this is what pe- people want to know. We're on social media to know about our friends. So share what's going on with your life. Tell people, don't be shy. Don't be British. Don't be Canadian. Be a promoter. Yeah, you're right. And also, I mean, I, uh, it's also like, you know, the time thing. So as a person with a full-time job and like, even I was just asking friends, like, what do you, how do you keep your house clean? Like, I find I'm only cleaning on weekends because I start Monday with this really clean apartment. It's so nice. And then by the weekend, it's like dishes are in the drying rack that I haven't put away. Curly, I have curly hair. So there's curly dust bunnies everywhere. It's just like, I find I only have time to market or to draw. I find I have a hard time finding time for both. So I'm doing like a half hour of marketing in the morning here. And like during the day, I do a little bit on my lunch hour, as we said, but then at night I need to, to work on drawing. And then I do an hour of it and then it's fucking time for bed. So I find it's hard to have a day job, do marketing and do the drawing. That's just just a big challenge. And 
I don't know. I can't get that. Like, I can't make time appear from nowhere, you know? No, no one can. We've all got the same hours. The only thing I would say is, is at this stage, you've got to think about what's the priority. And we've got two months after the Kickstarter, plus the bit in the middle of the Kickstarter. Like The priority now is sharing it everywhere for launch. That is the bit. We've got to get the people you know to share it. We've got all the people who've said they'll share it. They need to be primed, ready for Monday. This is your time. And it's the time to focus on the marketing and sales. And business does go in cycles and we'll need to balance and do some drawing as we go. Now it is all about telling the world Mandy Nine is coming. Okay, let's do this. So what's the next, (laughs) like, okay, so I've contacted friends, you know, colleagues. I have still my whole Twitter followers, which is much less than Instagram. So you would say it's Monday, go back to every single person and be like, hey, just checking if you saw my message, I'm launching today. Just wanted to share that with you. You know, thanks a lot. If you could share it and help me bring Mandy 9 to life, I would appreciate it so much. Just something like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because these are the warmest leads. Let's start there. And then we can start to talk about the cold leads, which is finding the people you don't know, going to the comic horror book pages, finding their followers, engaging with people. There's so much we can do afterwards, but we haven't even exhausted the people you know yet. And we can engage with them, get it shared, get it promoted. Then you've got the piece. So I don't know how much you know about the Instagram and Facebook algorithm, but the more engagement and the more comments you get, the more people will see your message. And it's kind of like a game. Funny story. The people who did write me back, all of a sudden they're liking my stuff in their Instagram feed. I don't think that's coincidental. I think that by engaging with me in messages, I showed up on their feed higher. This is what I see. I don't think they just magically started liking my stuff again. I think that it reignited me in their feed. That's exactly what happened. So Facebook and the entire goal of Facebook and Instagram is to keep you on their service. The longer you're on their service, the more adverts they can show you and the more money they can make. So what they want to do is show you content that gets you to click, like, comment and stay on their their service. So when you have shown and you've engaged with a particular subject, a particular person, they're going to go, oh, they like them. Let's show them more of that person because that will keep them on the service. And that is exactly what we need to do with everyone else when we're doing this, because the more they comment on your stuff, the more their friends will see it, the more it gets shared, the more you comment on it. So every time the posts that I do that are most successful on Facebook are the ones where someone comments and I will reply and then you get a comment back and then someone else comments and I am on it replying to all of these different things. And that goes to hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of people more than if I put it out and you get a couple of comments and then that's it, it goes silent. And Facebook, Instagram are looking at, you put a piece of content out there, how quickly does it get likes engagement and connection. If it gets nothing in the first half an hour and they've showed it to a few people, they're going, well, this is not engaging content. It's not going to keep anyone on our service. Whereas if you get a load of likes and a load of comments straight away, they start to go, oh, this is interesting. Everyone's liking it and commenting it. We need to show it to more people. So actually that first half an hour, hour after you put your post out is quite important. And if we can have, I don't know if you've got a a WhatsApp group for your best friends. You've got a couple of people you can ask. You can message me and say, I've shared my thing, like and comment. My wife does it for me. When I share my blog post, she's the first one that likes and comments. She's very loyal. But just that little push of someone else liking and commenting enables it to go further, shares your message with more people and gets it out there. And we've got to start playing that social media game to get your message out there. It's less important on Twitter because Twitter is about directly talking to people. But Facebook and Instagram, it's all about the game. It's all about the algorithm. And we need to engage, engage, engage. Okay, I like that. And I do have a few friends who like everything that I post, but maybe I'll add, I'll say, if I let you know, or, you know, can you help me out? And when I post it, can you like it right away? Yeah, I mean, I have at least, I have at least five I could ask who will help. 
certainly my parents love me and they like everything I post on Facebook. They're not on the Instagram because they're a little too old for that. But I do have friends who will definitely like my stuff immediately if, when I, if I ask them to and help support me that way. And I support them too. I mean, I like everything that they post. It doesn't matter if it's their lunch or they're my friends. So I'm like, hey, nice lunch. <laughs> Yes, and it does actually make a difference. It's quite incredible how much of a difference it makes, especially this is a short-term game for you, which is really good because we've got a month to make the most of this. So we can just go for it for a month and you're not going to annoy people for one month. They're going to see your stuff get really excited and they'll start asking, how's it going? And you can start to put updates, you know, day X and we've got so many backers and they'll start to cheer you on and we can do updates. If you're doing this permanently, people get annoyed. But for a one month period, go as hard as you can. Just get out there, do it, put it everywhere and have fun with it. So we need an actual plan, Jamie. What do you think the actual plan should be? Because I think you've got some great actions on the actual Kickstarter. Go through it once more time. Do the numbers once more so you're absolutely comfortable. Then what's the actual plan? What are we going to do? Oh, my God. The actual, like, do you mean marketing, everything, launch, the launch plan? Well, I guess we we sort of got a launch plan for Monday. We've got a, yeah, let, let's do a plan for the next week. What are we going to do over the next week? And we'll reconvene to work out how the launch has gone, what we're doing, and we'll come up with the plan from there. I got to get my notepad out. Oof. Okay, it's getting intense now. I'm going to write everybody again, like everyone on my Instagram. I'm just going to write definitely the ones who responded to me. And even the ones who didn't, I'm going to have a little thing, basically what I told you, of like, hey, just reminding you of this. And if you like it, I'd love to share it. I love that. Then I'll write all my real life human friends and be like, I launched today. Oh my God, I launched. This is so exciting. Can you check it out and share it? I would love that. Perfect. I'll say, just a tip for everyone. I've noticed this. I will ask friends if they can share it. And they're like, yes. And I ask them, if you know anyone who's into like horror, blah, 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 can you share it? And they're like, absolutely. And I've noticed that they'll just share like on Facebook, they'll just share the post. So I go to them and I say, hey, you know, I was wondering if you knew anyone that specifically that you wanted to share it with, could you send them a little message if you knew someone who you think would specifically like this? Oh yeah, I would. So those people who said they would share were never intending on individually writing somebody like I individually wrote them. They were like, yes, I will share because Facebook is a share button. So I specifically said, if you know anyone specific that you could just write them. And I even said, it'll mean so much more to them if you, you know, individually, you know, mention my name to them. So that is something that you don't assume your friends know what sharing means, <laughs> you know, uh, like give people instructions as much as you can. And now here's the thing. I have to give instructions. I just remember I have to give instructions to everybody who's old, older than me and Alan, because they don't know how uh, Kickstarter works. They don't know how to make an account. They don't know how to, how to fund a project. So I have to, sh to teach people how. I was thinking of making a video and posting on Facebook. This is how you fund a Kickstarter. Because yeah, people literally do not know, but I'm going to have to probably screen share with my parents, have a screaming match <laughs> as I get them. God, no, click. Maybe I'll just do um, team viewer and I'll just do it for them. Sorry, guys. Because otherwise I'm going to pull out all my hair before I finish that conversation. Technology and, and parents is it just doesn't mix. <laughs> So I think there's actually two really important concepts here for all of us. The first is the specificity of which you make a request. The more specific you are, the easier it is for someone to help you. If you're not very specific and you say, can you just share or can you do this? They'll just do what they think is right and that's it. If you say, please, can you share it on Facebook Please, can you give it to three friends? Like think of someone who loves comic books and send them a link with a little message. Please, can you do this? The more specific the request, the easier it is to follow. The more generic the request, you're actually making them do more work, which is the interesting thing. But people think it's polite to do the generic request. It's actually the opposite. For me, if you're telling me to do something, like, and I have to think about it, you are making me do work. Don't make me do work. Tell me exactly what you want. And I'll be like, okay, I can do that. But if you're saying, can you help me promote my Kickstarter? 
I'm like, what does that even mean, Jamie? What do I have to do? You're expecting me to do work for you now. Whereas if you say, share it on Instagram, do this, click here, do that. I'm like, okay, I can do that. Bing, 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 done. Supported Jamie, happy, everyone's a winner. And you actually get more out of me the more specific you are. And I think tagging on from the specificity is that the making it easy piece. And to give you the example of that, I learned this lesson from a friend called Mike. He wanted me to write him a reference. And that's actually a lot of work sometimes. Well, it's not a lot of work. It's like 10 minutes sitting down thinking about it. But he said to me, I know I'm asking a lot. If you want, I'll write you a first draft and you can edit it. I was like, that's awesome. Send me the first draft. And he sent me a first draft. He was actually too modest. So I bigged him up far more, gave him some energy. I thought he was excellent and I put it out there. But he made my life easy. So if you can make your friend's life easy by here's some text you could use to share it. Here's the link to the exact post. All you have to do is click here, put this text in and do it. The picture you could share on your Instagram is attached to the email. Like whatever it is, the easier you make it for people to help you, the easier they find it and the more they will help you. Oh my God, that's so brilliant. My mom doesn't know what the heck to write. I'm going to I'm going to write for her. <laughs> hey, my daughter is launching her first Kickstarter. You know, it's a horror comic. I know like that's weird, but I love her. And it would be so great if you could check it out. Here's the link. You know, you can sign up for Kickstarter using your Facebook account. Bam, done. And then even for my friends, I can just be like, hey, my friend Jamie's doing this really cool comic. I think you would like it. Check it out. Bam. That's a great idea. Do the work for them. I love it. Those are the two key pieces, the specificity of the request and how easy you make it for people to support you. The easier it is, the more they will love you and the more they will do it and the more you will get results. That's fantastic. That's a great takeaway, Adlin. Thank you. It's a pleasure. So the plan is write everybody again on Instagram, write the real life humans and the emails and tell them about it, get it shared. Is there anything else we need to do over the weekend ready for the launch on Monday? Oh, panic. I haven't had a panic attack yet. I have to have that. That was how to schedule that in some time for this. Yeah. Those are optional. Those are optional. You don't have to do it. You could just put it off. Why don't we put it off till after the Kickstarter? Okay. We can do it together afterwards. All right. I'll do it. Will you wait for me? Yes. Okay. I promise. I promise. I'll wait till after. So I do want to finish the print, the single, a single drawing of the print and uh, the coloring page, you know, even if they're not the actual ones that'll be there, you know, I can always change things, but I want to just make the page even more like, this is what you're going to get. This is what the coloring page will look like. This is what the print will look like. And I'm drawing them and I'm like, they're so ugly, but it doesn't matter. Just get it done. Like a great tip that I've learned from a previous session was just do like the next step. For example, like I was doing the women in horror drawings and I'm still going to continue them, but they weren't what I needed to do right now. And even the print, it's like, What I need to do is the marketing and I can do the print the weekend right before. Nobody's even seen the pre-launch page. So I'll do that now, but it was more important every morning to send, you know, those 20 to 30 messages. So the other, I guess, thing about having limited time is it forces you to do what you need to do. In fact, when I had like two months until launch, I was super scattered. And now that I am like three days, I know exactly what I need to be working on. So that's interesting. Why can't I do that when I had the two months? Is it because it doesn't work like that? Or is it because I'm not well organized? It can work like that. What we need to do is log this feeling that you have now and practice getting this directness. Because it's like, okay, I have clear tasks, ding, ding, ding. Let's do it. Let's make this happen. There's no reason why that can't happen two months out and we would be further forwards this is the first one. We have to go through the process and we'll get better for the second Kickstarter. We'll get better for the third. And that's the process. And by the fifth, you're like, this is, I know what I'm doing. Three months out, you've got a mailing list of 10,000. You're doing this, you're doing that, and you're smashing it. But we have to get the first one done and we have to learn the lessons on the way. But you can absolutely have that kind of laser focus at the beginning if we want to. We just need to practice, get it working, get it rehearsed, get it in so that we know what we're doing. And that next step thing, the next step is share it everywhere. So Jamie, 
where do people find out more about your art? I know we do this every podcast, but I really want people to check out your art and have a look if they're listening to this. So tell us your website. Yeah, maybe for some reason, this is the first one they chose just randomly in the middle of my launch. Well, good for you guys. I'm launching next week. Uh, of course, it'll all be dead and gone by the time they, they listen to this. Uh, so ooh, you from the future, you know, if I succeeded or not on my Kickstarter, that's very exciting for you. But they'll still be able to buy the comic book in digital format on your website, I assume. Oh, yeah, definitely. And who knows? Maybe there'll be a lot of, who, maybe there'll be some issues left, some copies, some extra copies that you can mm. actually order, like the print one. So you can find me at jamiedillon.com. So J A Y M I E, Dylan, like Bob Dylan. And then on all the socials, it's Miss Jamie Dillon. Because there's another Jamie Dillon in the world, and she took my freaking Instagram name. So I'm Miss Jamie Dillon on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you very much. <laughs> and TikTok, but I don't really use that one. I just, I don't know. I guess I'm too old. I think when you're over 30, you can't even log into it. I think that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, you are a legend. Let's make this go. And my closing message to everyone listening, and obviously to Jamie as well, is these three simple things. Number one, if you build it, they will come is the biggest lie out there. No one will come unless you promote it. And that's what Jamie has been doing. And she's starting to see progress. People are interested. People are visiting it. Things are happening. And I'm so excited to see where we go with this. So you have got to promote, promote, promote. The second is people are busy. And just because they ignore one of your messages doesn't mean they don't love you. Doesn't mean you should go again. Doesn't mean you should hide in the corner and rock gently, which is what I used to do in the early days. We've got to get the internal fortitude to have another go and have another go and have another go because they're just busy. So send those next messages. And if there's someone you've messaged that you really want to work with, they might have missed it. Send them another one. Send them another one because it's that perseverance. It's that drive. It's that getting through to them that will make this stuff happen. So I would recommend to you all to get out there and reach people, send those messages and persevere. And most of you, most of the people listening to this show, you are so far off pushy. You could triple your efforts and still be polite. So please start sending those messages. And the final thing is the easier you make it for people to help you, the more they will help you. So be very specific about how people can help you. Who do you want an introduction to exactly? How can they share the message? What can they do? How exactly? Send them links, send them the details, send them the picture and ask exactly for what you want. You don't get what you deserve in life. You get what you ask for. And if you're not asking specifically, how do they know how to help you? So I would encourage you all, ask for what you want. Thank you for listening to The Rebel Entrepreneur. Please visit Jamie's website and have a look at what she's doing. And please get out there and create your business, create the life you want. No one else is going to do it for you. Let's make it happen. You can have any life you want to. Choose to build something cool. Choose to take action. Choose to work to make your dreams become reality. Stand out. Be different. Be yourself. Be a rebel entrepreneur.